Hello, welcome to This Family Does Everything. My name is Alexandria and this video is part 14 of Judge Doro and Daryl Brooks. The state has finally rested and it is time for the defense to take it away. So let's sit back, watch and analyze the Daryl Brooks trial. Mr. Brooks, listen to me please. I'm going to ask this question one more time. Man, it calls for I don't, a like, I don't no. like your tone and the way you're talking it, to me. I don't. Mr. I don't Brooks, appreciate it. Sit down. I don't care if no, you don't like I'm my not, tone. Gonna, You've been pushing my down. buttons all day throughout this entire okay, trial. And I have showed too? the utmost of respect no, for you. you and I Absolutely don't appreciate not. you impugning the integrity of this court. If that's what I you don't. want to call it, that's fine. But it's stop not accurate. Stop talking. What you mean, stop talking? I need to make a ruling. Okay, well, I'm purposely not talk, putting you in the to, other courtroom right now. Let's talk to now. each other like adults then. Mr. Because Brooks, I've never told you to stop talking. I'm going to ask this question one more time, and if he doesn't answer it, I'll take it as a no. Do you want the opportunity to question Detective Casey regarding either his questioning or meeting up with your mom and your niece and nephew about possible testimony or the jail, the search of your jail cell? Yes or no? What was the problem with me asking the question right, about the jail cell? He's not answering my question. We'll move on. I'm on trying to understand. Action. If I don't right, understand, how do I know? How do I know what I'm supposed to answer if I don't understand? <laughs> and I don't agree to a stop. The record in State versus Brooks appearances are as they were before. I think the audience yeah, yeah, let's do that. All right, let me do that again. We are back on the record. State versus Brooks appearances are as they were before. I don't consent to being called that name for the record. Uh, my name is Daryl Brooks Jr. <laughs> are there any issues related to exhibits or other things before I bring the jury back out for what I believe will be the state resting. No, Your Honor, I do believe that I did check with your clerk. Um, everything that we have um, offered and admitted matches what the court has. So I believe we are, are good on that. Um, I have what? one question oh, sure. about exhibit 89. And I don't know if I missed in my notes. Um, okay. What do the party's notes reflect on whether that was received? Um, I showed that it was offered and admitted before it's published, or it wasn't published to the jury. But if not, we would move Exhibit 89 into evidence. And do you recall what Exhibit, exhibit 89 is? It's Otherwise, a certified bail form. No, 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 I'm asking, oh. I'm asking Mr. Brooks. So, oh, sorry. Um, that was the second of the two bail bonds. Do you have a recollection of whether it was received? I don't. All right, then what I was... I know I objected to it. I know you objected when it was, I think, displayed for the witness who then testified about it. Um, I'll receive it and also advise the jury. Were there any other exhibits? I have one other issue on... <clears throat> evidence and exhibits as well, but um, are there going to be any other exhibits that we need to tidy up the record in front of the jury with? I don't believe so. Um, I, I know at one point um, someone caught that we moved, it was either exhibit 175 or 178 into evidence and the court admitted either 165 or 168 on the record, so I don't know. Um, so maybe just I think you, you have any recollection of that, sir? Recollection of what? Related to what the state just put on the record. Do you know what was that? What witness that was? 
But that was um, just a case. was the screenshot taken from the video. I know I have a note that it was received and published. Mm -hmm. um, can you believe I may have just referenced it by the wrong name? I thought it was 178. I thought you referenced it by the wrong number. So it's either 175. Uh, 175 was referenced as 165 or 178 was referenced as um, 168. What is I, one one seventy? I know that one seventy five is what I just said. Correct. What was one seventy eight? One seventy eight was the video. The oh, that was the, was the most recent one. Okay. What's the request then as it relates to when the jury comes back in? Your Honor, I just, um, there's two different ways to do this. I can um, put on the record, I have the exhibit numbers, and I can just put on the record just to verify that these exhibits have all been offered and admitted into evidence, and the courts agreeing, because we've just agreed that those are, um, your records are the same as my records, or we can clarify just if there was some confusion about exhibits 175 and 178 that were shown to the jury this morning, those 175 and 178 were offered and the court has admitted those into evidence. So however you want to. All right, sir, do you have any position on how I address this in front of the jury? Yeah, I'm, I'm objected to them being admitted at all. Well, those objections were already addressed. I'm talking about how I addressed to make sure the jury knows they were received by the court. However you're going to do it is how you're going to do it. I don't think what i got to say much matters. Well, what you say matters, sir, but no, the fact that I've already ruled on the admissibility is not something I'm going to revisit. Um, what i what I got to well, say Hold on, that, that door is... All right, it's... Sometimes that door upstairs malfunctions and... All right, I didn't hear the last part of what you said. What I have to say about anything definitely doesn't matter. I take huge objection with that, sir. It's true. And it, that may be your perception, but that is absolutely not true. This court takes your positions on evidence, legal arguments, admissibility, uh, things of that nature. Um, I take all of that quite seriously. Um, but somehow it's always overruled or discarded. Sir, can I keep going because you've interrupted me once again. I, I, my perspective on all of this, sir, is when you disagree with a ruling, you interrupt. You try to debate the topic again and again. You make disparaging remarks, either directly or under your breath, that are audible. Sometimes you roll your eyes. I mean, just previous to the break, you and I were talking over each other. I couldn't really get a word in edgewise. You wanted to debate topics that I've already made decisions on. I wanted to get clarification on whether you wanted to pursue any questioning, for example, with Detective Casey. Um, I gave you multiple opportunities to answer questions directly. You chose not to do that. You directly challenged me about my authority in this courtroom. You refused to sit down repeatedly. Did I raise my voice? I absolutely did. Was I frustrated? I absolutely was. I'm sitting down. My voice is calm. I think the break was good. I hope for all it was good for me. We had had a very long morning. It was about 11.30 when we broke. It's now 11.54. <clears throat> I didn't 
remove you to the other courtroom despite my repeated warnings because frankly I knew I was going to take a break. I just wanted to get through some issues outside the presence of the jury, which is the proper procedure for how to address objections if the record can't be done in a way that um, when a more full record needs to be made is how I'll put it. And I indicated during the cross-examination of Detective Casey, I would take your objections under advisement, I would address them outside the presence of the jury. You chose not to answer my questions, and so I moved on. So now, with you. respect to, I, I want to also address exhibits and the normal course of exhibits coming in a trial. Because I think there's some misunderstanding and certainly confusion on your part, sir, about the exhibit list that I asked the state to file near the beginning. And that was, frankly, to assist the court and my clerk in keeping track. Most trials, the normal course of action is as long as an exhibit has been uh, provided to a party previously or in some circumstances, if not, it's rebuttal, we're not quite there yet, that as long as it's been turned over in discovery, oftentimes parties will simply have exhibits marked as they're presented in the course of a trial. There's not a legal requirement unless a judge <coughs> orders it uh, that would prohibit a party from marking a document that's been already exchanged and having it offered as an exhibit. There was nothing, nothing improper about what the state did with Exhibit 178. And I want to make that record very, very clear. As Attorney Opper stated, trials are fluid. Things happen. Parties can open the door to what might be inadmissible evidence uh, for a variety of reasons. For example, this court made a number of pretrial rulings related to other acts evidence. Even during your cross-examination today, you came awfully close. I had a, the witness turn to me and pause and say, I don't think I can answer that in a clear recognition that that witness, Detective Casey, understood his obligation to honor the pretrial rulings. And we moved on from there. Um, I bet that's happened a half a dozen times in this trial. And that's frankly to protect your rights, sir. <coughs> The door could have been opened a long time ago to the other acts evidence with Erica Patterson. And I frankly kept it out, despite your questions. So with that, I want to bring the jury back out. I will ask the state um, I'll simply just ask the state, are there any, um, anything additional the state's offering by way of testimony or exhibits, you can then address the exhibit issue, then I'll ask the state if the state has any additional witnesses, um, and the state can officially rest, um, given the time of day that it is, it's, um, 11.58, um, I'm not going to have uh, Mr. Brooks start with his opening statement. We'll do that when we come back after the lunch hour. Um, I think, frankly, the time over the lunch hour will be good for everyone to regroup, hopefully get a little bit to eat, and uh, come back fresh. And then we'll have um, his opening statement and the start of testimony. Before I bring the jury out, there's one other thing I want to do though. I just need a moment to pull uh, something up from on my computer. So is that is that addressing subject matter jurisdiction that you're pulling up? No. When would that be proven for the record? Sir, please don't interrupt me. I need to focus I'm, on what I'm doing. I'm not doing. interrupting you. I'm just asking the question. All right. I'm 
not going to be addressing that. So, so would it don't be interrupt proven? me right now. I'm trying to do something on my computer. Would it be proven I need to on focus. the record? I feel it's important at this time to at least give you the advisement pursuant to special material 28. It is regarding your decision on whether to testify. I'm not asking you to make that decision, but since we're on the verge of you starting your case and it may impact your um, opening statement, um, I wanted to go through the following. Um, sir, are you aware that you have a constitutional right to testify? I've been informed. Are you advised and informed that you also have a constitutional right not to testify? I'm not advised, I'm informed. Are you advised and informed that the decision whether to testify is for you to make? I don't understand the question. Do you, are you advised and informed that the decision on whether you testify in this trial is for you and you alone to make? I'm informed. Not advised. You under do you are you advised and informed, sir, that if you choose not to testify, the jury will be advised that they cannot use that against you. In other words, you have that right not to testify. I'm informed. When you make a determination about whether to testify in this trial, I will further be asking you about whether anyone has made any threats or promises to you to influence your decision. I may um, also briefly go over your educational background. Did you hear me say that? No, i say it again. At the appropriate time, uh, when we go through this discussion more fully, I will also ask you whether anyone has made any promises to you to influence your decision on whether to testify. Did you hear me say that? I'll be for And then I will also ask you if anyone's made any threats um, or coerced you in any way in your decision to testify or not. Uh, what's the significance of that? so that I can make appropriate findings about the voluntariness, intelligence, and your, um, whether it's knowing voluntary and intelligent, your decision to testify. So whether, whether I give consent. That's not the legal determination that I make. It, it is simply something that is your choice. Um, I will honor your right not to testify. Obviously, that's a constitutional right. I will honor your right to testify. That's also a constitutional right. And the jury will be advised one way or the other. There's a jury instruction on that. Um, did you hear me advise you of all of this? I'm informed. All right. Okay, let's bring the jury out then. We can kind of tidy up the record and then we'll break for lunch. Judge, may I remove that uh, exhibit, please? Uh, I think they're right there, so let me just take it. All right, jury already coming out. Yeah, I'll just stick it. Okay, so go ahead and sit back jury. down. Thank you. Subject matter jurisdiction still hasn't been proven for the record, Your Honor. Should be proven at some point. everyone please be seated <coughs> all right then I'll turn to the state any uh, additional evidence at this time the state has no additional evidence your honor uh, may we make a record as to the exhibits go ahead please your honor uh, <coughs> we believe that the 
court has admitted all exhibits that have been offered with the exception of one prior ruling on exhibit six. I don't know if you want me to list them all by number or there are, it's one through 78, one through 178, but there are some numbers missing because we chose not to offer those exhibits. Anything specific as it relates to the most recent testimony? The most recent testimony with Detective Casey, we moved 177 and 178 and one, I'm sorry, 175, 150, 151, 88, and 89. I believe those were admitted by the court. That's my recollection as well, but for the jury, exhibits 150, let me start over, exhibits 88, 89, 150, 151, 177, and 178, if I didn't receive them during the testimony, I'm receiving them now. And 175, which was the still photo. Thank you. Sorry, I had a scribble on my pad and 175. And 13 and 14. Those are the outliers. I apologize. I believe those were received as well, but if I didn't state it. Objection, I think they was already received. I appreciate that. I just want to be thorough for the record. 13 and 14 were received as well. Do they have any additional witnesses to call at this time? No, Your Honor. At this time, the state rests. All right. Thank you. All right. Then at this time, we are going to break for the lunch hour. I am going to have everyone come back at 1.30. It's a little bit longer. At least that's what I want to do for the lunch hour today. So I'll rise for the jury. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Are they documents from the discovery that you have? They documents of, of my filings and stuff like that. I'm sure they have copies of everything that I filed. I guess without knowing specifically what you're referring to, sir, I did give you the admonition previously that you are prohibited from discussing subject matter jurisdiction during your opening statement. It's not relevant. I'm not referring to the opening statement. I'm referring to things that I want to offer Give me for an evidence. example, please. I have, I just did. I said I have filings that I want to offer into evidence. That's too general, sir. I need a specific example so I can answer the question. What are you referring my, to? My filings. Everything Which that I filed. filing, sir? Every one of them. Well, they have to be relevant, number one, to the proceedings. Okay, number two, I don't know specifically what you're referring to. Um, you can't offer testimony of yours through an exhibit. That would be hearsay. So you'll have to testify if it's your statement that you're referring to. I'm not referring to my, I didn't say anything about testimony. I said I'm in general based on what I've seen thus far. So um, are you talking about during your opening statement or during the course of the questioning of the witnesses that you're calling? Your Honor, with all respect, I just clearly said filings that I filed. Mr. Brooks, if I understood, I'd answer. I don't understand what you're asking me. You need to be specific. I've, I've filed a, a number of documents. <clears throat> I think that's on well, the record that I filed. knowing what you're referring to, then my answer is no. But again, well, I guess I'll have to wait and see as to when you seek to admit them, whether there's any objection or not, and whether, they're, whether they comply with all of the rules of evidence and the rules of procedure. That's the best I can tell you at this point. I, I don't understand what you mean by that. They, they will only be relevant to obviously the, the, the matter. They, they wouldn't be relevant I, to anything I, else. I can't answer that anymore. We're gonna take our lunch break. It's 12-12, we'll see everyone back here at 125. We are in recess. So I'm not allowed to offer anything in the evidence? For the record, I never said that. We are in recess. So I'm, I'm trying to understand. Session, State versus Brooks, appearances are as they have been. And Mr. Brooks, I presume you're ready for your opening statement. Uh, just one second. And for the record, I don't consent to that name, Your Honor. What is your name? Brooks. Noted for the record. I intend to have the jury brought out. I presume you're ready to go. Having a slight issue finding certain. Can you sit up? Because it's I'm not hearing you very well. So that the microphone picks you up, please. I'm having a slight issue uh, locating some of the files that I need. That's what I was trying to say. All right, we'll take a take a moment. You can look. Tell, tell me when you locate them. Okay. <coughs> Your Honor, I have a question. Um, Go ahead. The the. Uh, the files that I'm attempting to locate are um, pertains directly to uh, the witnesses that I would be calling. Um, I'm not sure what witnesses are here today. Well, let's do this. Um, I'd like you to at least do your opening statement, bring the jury and do that. We'll give you an opportunity to look again. I can have the state write down who's here. I believe it's based on what you told them, and then we'll, if there's still something you need at that point, um, I'd like to at least bring the jury out and start with your opening statement, okay? Well, just so I'm clear, I didn't, I didn't give a specific order in, in, you know, who I will be calling by specific order. I, I gave uh, a generalization of uh, sure, I'll have who would the be, state. sorry, who who would be called on what day. Why don't I have the state write down 
who's here presently, and then you can make that determination, but at least let's go with the opening statement, okay? That's what I was trying to get at. It, it would help to know who's actually here today. Before you make your opening statement? Well, so I know if, if they're not here, then essentially I can't call them. Let's address that after. I'll have the state write down who they know to be here now or who's coming this afternoon, because there might have been people here this morning. I believe they're still here, but I'll let them write that down for you so you can better prepare. Uh, but at this point, I, I would like to bring the jury out for your opening statement. I presume you're going to give one. I am. Okay. Then yeah. let's, I'll have the jury brought out, okay? Subject matter jurisdiction. Um, my prior written decision stands. I will not be addressing that further. Your objection is noted, um, and I will be continuing with the trial. Is it verified proof for the no, record? Sir, I don't believe I need to do that, or that the state needs to do that as well. I, I believe your statement about that is a misstatement of the law, and I do not intend to pursue that further. Can you show me lawful law that says that? I gave you a written decision. I have done that. Can you show me lawful law that verifies that? Sir. For the record. I gave you a written decision. You that can, I accepted for value in return for and value. And that's, what, that's was, how I'm going to answer that. So let's. not verified um, proof. We still, we still aren't. Sir, there is no requirement in the law that the state or the court establish that. So Actually, your there is. All right. Actually, there is, Your Honor. Subject matter jurisdiction has so to please, be proven for the record. It has to be not. proven. It has to be proven. You know that just as well as Mr. Mr. Brooks. You know that. Please do not make statements that mischaracterize the law. You know it has to be proven. Or that impugn the, the integrity of this you court. You know it has to be proven the on the record. Proceedings here. You know the it has to be proven. The jury is advised to disregard the statements that Mr. Brooks is making regarding mm -hmm. subject matter mm -hmm. jurisdiction. They are not evidence and you are to disregard them. They're not presented as evidence. It just has yet to be proven for the record. The jury will disregard the incorrect statements of the law that Mr. Brooks is stating. Where's lawful law that is incorrect? Mr. Brooks, please. I am going to read one instruction. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. The defendant will now make an opening statement. The purpose of an opening statement is to give the defendant an opportunity to tell you what he expects the evidence will show so that you will better understand the evidence as it is introduced during the trial. I must caution you, however, that the opening statements are not evidence. With that, go ahead, sir. Uh, obviously, I don't have any uh, rehearsed or well. <coughs> well-prepared speech, so I'm just going to speak from the heart. Um, I would just like to first say that uh, I want to bring to remembrance something I, I think everyone in this room has been taught uh, pretty much as far back as we can remember is that there's always two sides to every story. Um, And for so long now, uh, roughly a year, there's only truly been one side told of this story. And uh, I've sat back and watched um, from countless narratives that, that, that's been put out there. Um, the way this incident has been portrayed at times. And uh, finally, uh, everyone getting a chance to get the full story. Um, you won't hear me try to uh, argue facts. Um, The fact is that this incident was tragic, very tragic. That's not lost on me. Um, facts are that uh, 
there's still a lot of people healing, um, a lot of families healing on both sides. And when I'm confident that uh, the evidence will show, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little emotional. When I'm confident that the evidence will show is that this incident was not planned. This incident was not intentional. And this incident was never even thought about. It's easy to I'm sorry. Give me a second. Uh, think is a uh, it's easy to look at the magnitude of something like this and form opinions I think uh, it's easy to disregard a lot of a lot of factors. And I think uh, in reference to what I stated earlier, it's, it's easy to forget the other side of the coin. There's been a, a lot of suffering involved in this incident, a lot. Obviously, um, with the families, Community. <laughs> and uh, even the alleged, the alleged defendant's uh, family as well, there's, there's been a lot of suffering. <laughs> a lot of misunderstanding. And uh, I just want you to keep in mind uh, everything that will be uh, presented in its totality. To keep in mind. the power that you have <laughs> I believe uh that should escape your, your knowledge. Um, 
this is this has been a long process for, for everybody. What I believe is uh, when it's time for you to make your decision, all of you, I believe that, and I pray that it's the right decision. <laughs> that all the factors are weighed. <coughs> it's, it's been a lot of words thrown out there about the alleged a lot of speculation, a lot of ridicule words like demon words like monster I know uh, a lot of the time I've been before you, you've you seen me with this mask on. <coughs> I've had my reasons for that. But I feel now is the time to. It's important that you see before who I am. No mask for who I am. I think this is the moment for that. Right at your uh, your eyes and ears remain as open as possible. I understand that you alone decide this case, this matter. power is in your hands, all of you. To determine for yourselves <coughs> what truth is. Thank you. And do we have their writing materials available? 
All right. Thank you. Mr. Brooks, you ready to call your first, would be your second witness, actually. Do you need a minute? Take a short break. Um, I'll rise for the jury, please. We'll be with you shortly. materials that you were looking for let us know if there's something you need in that regard and attorney Apper if you could perhaps just confer with him over which witnesses were are which witnesses are here I'll step off the bench while you do that and if someone can just let me know uh, I'll come back out in like between five and ten minutes unless I'm told to come back out sooner yes, Your Honor. thank you all right, thank you. Please be seated. Mr. Brooks, have you found what you were looking for? Uh, I'm just going to go with, uh, I'm just going to work off the list of the people who's here. Okay. If that's fine. All right. You know who you're going to call first? We'll have that person ready. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. You want to let us know so that the state can assist with that? Otherwise, you can just call when we're, we're, we are in front of the jury. So have the jury brought out, please. Well, some of them are downstairs and some of them are out here. So it's fine. It just will take a few minutes if they're over in the main courthouse. Okay. Why don't you tell the state the first witness to make sure they're right outside the courtroom, sir? Uh, most likely Bert, Bertram. 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 Okay. Most likely. Most likely. Do you want to give us two names and we'll have two people out there? I just want to make it go smoothly, sir. That's all. Uh, since I'm working off this list, I kind of, I wasn't expecting that to be first. Who do you want to call first? And we'll see if they're here. Well, I, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> That's okay. Apparently, this list is who's here, I'm guessing. That is, that's my understanding as well. Not yet. Is there someone you expected to be on the list that is not? Uh, kind of. Do you want to make a record of that? Do you want me to address it in any way? Mm, no, uh, not right now. All right, well then I'm gonna instruct the jury to come out and then you can call your first witness.
Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. All right, you may call your first witness. Actually, your second witness. Uh, the defense would like to call the plaintiff, state of Wisconsin, to the stand. Object. The objection is noted. It is sustained. Call your next witness, please. Reason for the sustain? Not relevant. And you haven't named a person to go along with that. Uh, the subpoena was accepted, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. I'll take the issue up outside the presence of the jury if necessary. Call your next witness, please. Well, I would like to make an oral tenant's motion to dismiss for failure to appear by the plaintiff and for failure to state a claim from which relief can be granted. I will take that up outside the presence of the jury. Next witness, please. So is the state not present? Mr. Brooks, I'm not going to address that any further. While the jury's present, I'll take that up outside their presence. Call your next witness, please. The defense calls Nicholas Kirby. All right. Nicholas Kirby. Is that a witness who's in the hallway? Do we know? I don't believe in the hallway, but we will have him brought over, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. It'll be just a moment or two while we wait for that witness to come into the courtroom. Sir, would you please make your way to the witness stand? It is up one riser to my right. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, who's across from you, will swear you in. Um, first name, Nicholas. Last name, Kirby. N-I-C-H-O-L-A-S-K-I-R-B-Y. Great. Thank you. Go ahead, sir, your witness. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Kirby. How are you today? I'm here. Uh, what do you do for a living? Mostly temp work. Um, do you recall the events of November 21st of 2021? All too well. And what were you doing that day? <coughs> what time of the day? Uh, around... Three o'clock-ish. Three o'clock-ish. Around three o'clock-ish, I was walking with Corey around Waukesha. Um, earlier, well, yeah. And uh, made reference to walking with Corey. Who, who is Corey? Corey is a friend of Miss Patterson's. And would it be fair to say that it's also a friend of yours? Mutual friend, yes. In reference to Corey? Yes. Oh. And what were you doing? Walking around Waukesha. She was waiting for Miss Patterson to get done meeting with Mr. Brooks. You? At 3 o'clock? Around 3 o'clock. It's around that time. I had, I had advised her not to go meet with Mr. Brooks. Uh, you made reference to uh, Mr. Brooks. Uh, Who's that? That would be you. And why would you say it would be you? That's you. Because that's your name. And you were privy to that information at the time? I was privy to the information about you about a week prior to this incident. About a week prior? And during your walking around, uh, what were you doing with Corey? Walking, like literally walking. We went from one store to walking around downtown after Erica told us she was going to be going to meet with Mr. Brooks. That would be you. 
I had advised her not to do it because it was a bad idea and I was in fear for her safety. You made reference to going from one store to another. What stores are you referencing? Dollar General and Speedway. Did you go anywhere else? No. Did you ever go to a park? No. You made reference to knowing about a Brooks a week prior to these events you said? I didn't I didn't know everything about him. Ms. Patterson had showed me his rap sheet, if you will, and a picture of him, and that was about it. I had heard prior well, come. I'm gonna stop the witness unless you want him to go there, not to discuss what may or may not be uh, conduct of Mr. Brooks prior to November 21 of 2021. Okay. With that understanding, go ahead and ask the next question. You, you made reference to a picture you, you were shown? Just a photograph with a rap sheet behind it. And at some point, did you and your mutual friend, Corey, meet up with Miss Patterson? Yes. Do you recall where that, were, where that was? Corey and I were in the uh, Dollar General area of Waukesha, which is between East and Broadway Street. We were walking towards, or away from Dollar General, towards where Erica had said that she was being assaulted and attacked. And do you recall where that area was? Yes. Where was that area? On White Rock Avenue, right across from White Rock Elementary, in front of the red apartments across from that area. Uh, red apartments? Yes. Do you know what those apartments are called? I do not know the name. I'm guessing they're called White Rock Apartments. And do you know if there's a park in that immediate vicinity? There is a park there named Frame Park, yes. <coughs> Did you ever go to Frame Park? No. We were in that area near the park where the elementary school is and the apartments are. About what time did you and your mutual friend Corey meet up with Ms. Patterson? Ms. Patterson called me and said that she was... About what time was the question? About what time and I'm getting to that. Well, did you meet up? I'll the witness answer to this question specifically. What time? Um, honestly, around whenever, what time the parade started. Would, I would have to say like dusk. I honestly don't, I don't wear a watch, so. Sorry, I don't remember the time. But if I had to put it at a time, I'd probably say about 4.35ish. Let's back up a little bit. Around what time did you and your mutual friend Corey first hook up that day. I had worked that whole day, so we didn't meet up until I was done working, which was probably about two thirty, three o'clock. And at some point, you received a phone call from Miss Patterson. Yes. You yourself. Yes. And then at that point, what did you do? When she told me that she was in trouble and she needed help, I went to her aid, which means I took off from where I was near Dollar General and ran to where she told me to go. And when you got there, what did you see? When I got there, well, halfway towards White Rock Elementary, I stopped a police officer at a barricade and I let him know that a woman was being assaulted in a vehicle. And do you recall um, giving a description of who may have been assaulting your friend? No. Why not? Because 
at that point in time, the description didn't matter. I had the identity of the vehicle. So I told them you need to be looking for a red SUV with a woman screaming out of it. And how did you come into the knowledge of the description of the vehicle? Because I saw the vehicle. At what point did you see the vehicle? When Corey and I were walking up White Rock, White Rock Avenue on the <coughs> apartment building side of White Rock, which would have been my right if you were walking towards the train tracks that cross White Rock. On my left was White Rock Elementary. I walked past the red vehicle, didn't realize that she was in that vehicle. Then Corey and I crossed the street to White Rock Elementary and started walking down the sidewalk, and I heard her scream, Miss Patterson scream. I don't remember exactly what she said, but she screamed, and I knew it was her, so I walked back across the street and escorted her across the street over to White Rock Elementary. I don't think that's what I... <laughs> I'm just giving you full description. Um, <coughs> let's back up a little bit because that, that doesn't make sense. Um, you stated that you had a description of the vehicle. Would that be fair to say? Yes. The question was, how did you... How did you learn of the description of the vehicle at that point? Ms. Patterson told me over the phone that she was in a red SUV. There aren't many red SUVs with young women screaming for help in Waukesha. Hmm. So, I'm, <coughs> so I'm assuming because you made reference to uh, stopping law enforcement before arriving to the scene. Would that be fair to say? Yes. So I'm assuming somewhere in the time of you stopping the law enforcement officer to report what you were being told and then actually walking past the vehicle as you said you did and then hearing this and all this, did you give a full report to law enforcement? At the time when someone was in help and needed help immediately, absolutely not. I said, there's a woman being attacked in a red SUV. You need to call for a backup now. And, and then you just ran. And then ran, I ran. ran towards the person that needed help. Did you at any time give, uh, give a more detailed report that evening? No, not that evening. Did you speak with any more law enforcement that evening? Yes. Do you recall whom that was? I do not recall the officer's name that showed up in the SUV coming down White Rock, in the police squad SUV. I don't even know the name of the officers that turned into frame park <coughs> um, and went to the boat launch instead of where Miss Patterson, and <coughs> myself, and Corey were. I did speak how, to an officer. How would you, how did you come into the knowledge of where officers turned and, and went? Because me, Erica, and Corey were arguing with Mr. Brooks on the side of the road of White Rock, right in front of White, bleh, right in front of White Rock Elementary. And the officer that, that, that I had stopped at the barricade when we were coming to Ms. Patterson's aid had radioed for backup and obviously given them description of a vehicle, the vehicle that I had described to them, the red SUV. That backup came, but they went to Frame Park. They did not go to where we were on White Rock. Any idea why they went to Frame Park if you specifically told them a description of a vehicle and where it was located? I did not tell them where the vehicle was located because at first incident, Mr. Brooks had taken off in his SUV.
in the in the police report and is it fair to say that the the officer that took your report was writing down what you told them do you mean the officer that I alerted about the trouble in the SUV well let me back up on the next day the 22nd of November of 2021 did you speak with a detective at that time yes I did and during that interview were they writing down what you were saying I believe so yes but I leave I believe it may also have been recorded on tape I'm not sure and do you yourself recall stating to the detective that your friend Ms. Patterson was being assaulted somewhere near the area of White Rock School? Objection leading. Um, overruled. He may answer. I'll just caution <clears throat> Mr. Brooks about leading questions since it's his witness, but this particular question you can answer. Uh, yes, I mentioned that I had received a phone call from Ms. Patterson and that she was being assaulted while in a vehicle. At any time, did you identify uh, White Rock School? I identified the street, which is named White Rock, the apartment buildings and the school as well, and as well as Frame Park. So you did identify Frame Park? I identified the entire ge geographical area. And at some point you said you heard your friend Miss Patterson screaming? Yes. And do you recall what she was screaming? Uh, I said, do he recall? Um, as for the question, he's asking, did he hear? So you may answer. It's a yes or no. I do not. Yes, she screamed. Do I remember what? She was trying to say, no, I'm guessing it would be help. I'm in trouble. I would assume that that's what a person would scream when they're in trouble, is for help. Do we still have the uh, exhibit with the footage from the White Rock School available? The security footage? The security footage, I'm we, sorry. We do. Would the state be willing to pull that up? I guess I need the defendant to identify which exhibit he would like us to publish. There's three and four. Door one and door two. I'm sorry, you say exhibits um, three and four have been received. One is of the White Rock Door One, the other is White Rock Door Two. I believe those are the videos you're referring to. Uh, let's try Door Two. Okay, that's exhibit four. Let's just put it up for the witness initially, make sure it's the one Mr. Brooks wants. I appreciate the state with their assistance. Uh, can you see that on your monitor, Mr. Brooks? Is this the one yeah, you're looking at? Yeah, I can see it. I believe there's two clips from this, but um, go ahead. Um, can you... This, this one is roughly seven minutes, so I, I would need a little bit of it played, if possible. <coughs> it's been um, received, so go ahead. It'll be published, so everyone can see. Well, b before it's published, can you show it to the uh, witness? That's fine. We'll just play for the witness then. I'm sorry, I should have said that before. It's playing, so we'll let it go. Let us know if there's a point where you want it stopped. Okay.
I'm not sure if this is the video you're looking for, though. So it might be, I think it might be door one. No. It's exhibit three. No, maybe not. Let's watch. I could be wrong. I was kind of thinking that, too. Take a look. Of course, none of our statements what? right now are any kind of evidence. We're just, <laughs> um, we're just okay. trying to get to the right spot. Um, can you? Pause right now at 105. 105. Can you, can you back it up a few seconds? Not not two or three, but maybe five seconds, six seconds, maybe. It's at 59 seconds. The witness. It, it is on the witness stand, by the way. Just so you're aware. Okay. He's watching it. Uh, can you play from here? I don't think it's playing. It's it's playing. Oh, okay. Pause right there. From what you can see in this video, do you see anyone get in or out of the vehicle that you that you see on your screen? Miss Patterson has just exited the vehicle. Just for the record, the video was played. It's Exhibit Four from 56 seconds to a minute 21. Go ahead. Uh, I didn't hear. I didn't hear that. So Miss Patterson was the one that exited the red SUV. You saw someone exit? Yes. Can you wind it back? To what? Again. Uh, to you want it back to 56 seconds? No, to, to 105, where it was paused the first time. Okay. <coughs> Thank you for attempting to do that, Ms. Gussie. It is paused at 105. Do you want to play from Yes, or? yes, I'm sorry. Pause. Pause again at 121. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did you see anyone from, in the video that you're being shown now, from about the one minute and five second mark to where it's paused right now at one minute and 21 seconds? Did you observe anyone get in or out of the vehicle? I'm going to take back what I said earlier. Apparently, according to this video, she did not exit your vehicle. She was behind the white rock sign. That's why I did not see her. Did you see anyone get into the vehicle? Later on within the incident, on, yes. On the video that you, you are able to view right now, from the 1 minute and 5 second mark to the 1 minute and 21 second mark, did you observe anyone get into the vehicle? No. <coughs> Can you uh, publish for the jury? You want to replay it again? Yes. Go ahead. We'll start at the close to the minute mark as possible. Again, is that where the defendant would like it started? This was uh, ar around the 105, with, around that area. Five, four. I know we have to wait for the jury, right? Okay. Right, and then you want it to the minute 21 mark again? Yes, right, if, okay. if I may. Go ahead. And at that time, were you already in, in route to where you believe your friend was being assault, uh, assaulted at? Objection calls for speculation. This defendant has not even put this witness at this location at this time. He's just having him testify about right. what he's seeing in video. I understand the objection. It's sustained. Please establish uh, some foundation for this witness being present at that location for were you, more information about the incident. Were you present at, at this time? We were on White Rock Avenue, but we were not in the general location of the school as of yet, as of that point in time. So to your recollection, you didn't see anything that you're seeing right now 
or on this video, you did not see the the day of the incident? No, I definitely saw Miss Patterson in a red SUV that day. Did you see? At this specific time, no. Because I was down the road on White Rock talking to an officer who was manning the intersection of Hartwell and White Rock and reporting at that time. Can we play a little bit more, if I may? Objection as to relevance. If he wants to direct the video to a certain time that and he would like to ask this witness about that particular time that the witness saw that, that's fine. But he's, he can't go through each video and say, and ask general questions. Um, there's only been one video that's been shown. I'm going to give Mr. Brooks some leeway on this. The video is to be played from this moment, and then Mr. Brooks tell us when you want it to stop. Okay. What, what I'm attempting to do for the record, Your Honor, is... Just play the video, and you okay. can ask your question. All right. Go ahead. Can you pause it right there? Video's paused at 138. By what you are viewing in this video right now, had you and your mutual friend Corey linked up with Ms. Patterson at that point? At this point in time in the video, given from what I've just seen, that was when Erica was on the phone trying to get a hold of me. We were already on White Rock at that point in time. We were not near the school at that point in time, though. <coughs> So that was when you would, to your recollection, that's when you would say the phone call to you was made? One of the phone calls, yes. She made multiple phone calls to me, I think probably about six. <coughs> I had been having issues with my phone that day, so it had been turned on and off multiple times. The final time that it was turned on was when I picked up her phone call and she said, I need help, I'm in trouble, come help me. I'm being assaulted. You just That's made. When I left. You just made reference to that point in the vehicle being. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm so drained. That point in the video was when you <coughs> you made reference to that point in the video being when you received the phone call. Yes. A phone call out of a multiple from her. That's fair. A phone call. Um, would it be fair to say, though, would it be fair to say that, and this is in reference to you saying that you were having issues with your phone that day, would it be fair to say that you're not sure how many phone calls you had received that day or who they were from? I only received 51 phone calls on my phone that day, that I actually do know. Six of which belonged to her. And all around the same time? All around the time. She didn't, obviously didn't want to get off the phone because no one calls me six times in a row unless they need some help. Can we continue to play from 138? Go ahead. Can you pause right there very quick? Paused at, at 1 minute 47 seconds. Do you see in this video uh, your friend Miss Patterson walking back in the direction that she had just come from? I see her on the phone talking to someone, which I assume would be me, telling me Mr. where Kirby, she... Mr. Kirby, I'm just going to... I need you to answer the specific question that's being asked at the moment, okay? All right. Thank you. Yes, I see her on White Rock on the phone, walking back in the direction she was originally. Again, Your Honor, I'm going to object to this line unless the defendant can put this witness there. I don't know what the relevance of this testimony is. I well, didn't even the exhibit it. has been received, it's been published previously. Absolutely. So I'm going to give Mr. Brooks some leeway here, um, overruled. I would like you to get to where you um, need to go, though. 
that was the next question. At th at this point in in the video, had you yet come into a range where you can you and your mutual friend Corey had you yet come into a range where you can see Miss Patterson at that point? Corey was the one that spotted her first. Could you yourself see her at that point? I heard her scream. That's what, that's what caught my attention. And you made reference to that scream being heard from inside the vehicle. Would that be fair to say? Yes, because that's where she was when she called me. And I was still on the phone with her while going down White Rock Avenue. Even while I was talking to the officer, I said, I'm on the phone with her right now. I'm trying to figure out where she is. Can you please call for backup? So we continued down White Rock to look for Miss Patterson. <coughs> Would it be fair to say that in the phone call you received, she told you where she was at and that's the area that you were generally responding to with your uh, mutual friend, Corey? Ms. Patterson doesn't know Waukesha. I knew the area she was talking about because I live in that area. Would it be fair to say that you just testified to <coughs> when you had the interaction with law enforcement that you stated you're on the phone with her right now trying to figure out where she was? So would it be fair to say at that point you didn't know where she was? I knew that she was on White Rock. I didn't know exactly where or how, or how far down on White Rock she was at that point in time. At that specific time, I did not know. It wasn't until I seen a red SUV parked in front of the apartment buildings on White Rock that I figured that might be the one that she was in. It was Corey who spotted her across from the road. From we're paused at the 1 minute and 47 second mark of this video. It, it's a little hard to see houses and things of the like. Can you point out in what area the red apartment you're referring to might, might be? It's a touch it's, screen. It's a touch screen, so you can. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You can make an arrow and point in the direction if that's helpful. I'm not good with technology, guys. Sorry. I'm a dirt digger. Okay, this is, the entrance, this is the entrance to White Rock Elementary, across the street and up maybe 20, 30 feet, there's an intersection leading from an apartment building to the White Rock campus. That would be up here in this general corner, right here, this whole area. Would it be fair to say that from where we're paused at in the video, we can't tell if there's any vehicle parked in that general area. You literally just played the video where the vehicle just turns around. Just answer the question, sir. No, you cannot see it from this angle. Um, can we please clear the uh, yes. arrow? Thank you. Would it be fair to say that where the video is paused now, that Miss Patterson is not, or who you identified as Miss Patterson, is not inside of a vehicle? She is not inside of a vehicle in this video, no. Can we play it from 1 minute and 47 seconds? Go ahead. there at this point had you uh, come into a range where you can see Miss Patterson at that point no the record videos paused at 213 I'm sorry I, I did it's all right. 213 keep going and you made reference to uh, your friend Corey spotting her first 
Yeah. Is that Cor correct? Corey had said that she thought she had seen her across the street, and we looked, and we crossed the street once, and then we crossed the street back over. Then we crossed again for a final time. That was until later when the incident with Mr. Brooks took par took part or took place. And at this point, walking with your uh, friend Corey, had <clears throat> she alerted you to spotting Miss Patterson at that point? She said she's over here. She must be out of his car now or something. She said something along the lines of that. So we went across the street and there was Miss Patterson hobbling down the street with a boot on her leg. You made reference to your friend Corey saying she must be out of his car now. Did Do you know, as you were walking with your friend Corey, do you know if she observed Miss Patterson being in a vehicle at that point? She was with me when the phone call came. So... I assume that when someone tells me that they're in a vehicle, then they are in a vehicle. That does not mean that they would be in a vehicle by the time I got there. I was on foot, and I wasn't walking. I was running. Can you play it from 2 to 13? Hard to see down in that corner. Um, Hold on, let it play. Okay. Pause right there. Is that 409? Yes. Um, would it be fair to say we see some individuals walking right here? Are you able to see that in the video? Yes, I can see it. At that time, had you come close enough to the scene where you can observe any individuals in that area? I don't remember the people that were in that area. I was only focused on the one, and that was the one in danger. Could you so no. Could you at that point observe Miss Patterson? From my stand from my point on the street from where I was? At that time, yeah, where is where is Paul's at now? During a parade, no. Can can we clear the uh, circle? <coughs> Thank you. Um, we observed at some point Miss Patterson crossing over to the opposite side of the road. Yes. Did you did you see that? Yes. Any I was idea? on the phone with her at that point. Could you observe from coming down White Rock? Can you obs observe that from where you were at that time? I was at the intersection of White Rock and Hartwell when she said that she was by some red apartment buildings. Could you see her from that position? No, not from that far down. Can we play it from 4, 409? Go ahead. <clears throat> Pause right there. Pausing at 418. Uh, 418, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You see the two individuals here? Yep. Do you know who those individuals are? It's me and Miss Corey. So at 409 to 418, you were able to come into view of Miss Patterson at that point? No. I wasn't. I was on my phone trying to call her back to find out where she was. <coughs> Can we clear this circle? Thank you. So at, thi so at this point right here with the videos pause for 418. You weren't able to observe Miss Patterson on White Rock Avenue at that point? I <laughs> Huh? Overruled the witness may answer. I was not looking ahead of me. As you can tell by the video, I was looking at my phone trying to call Miss Patterson back because she was not answering her phone. That scared me. So I told Corey to keep an eye out looking and look for her as I tried to keep calling her. 
when I looked up and we got past the White Rock Elementary School sign, that was when I seen her. Would it be fair to say that judging from the video, the White Rock, are you referring, let me back up. Are you referring to the sign right here that says White Rock Campus? I'm referring to where the end of the school building itself meets the driveway or the road that's that's there. There's um, a turn off road. I apologize. Can we take that X from next to the White Rock Campus sign? So can you point to exactly what what you're referring to? Where that intersection is, where I just drew that little X, that intersection cuts across from the other side of White Rock to the other side and leads to the um, leads to a road, but also there's the frame park area there, and I believe there's a boat launch there somewhere. I don't know. And at that point, you were able to observe Miss Patterson? I observed her walking when Corey was, had told me that she had seen her. And so we grabbed her and started to leave to turn around. At that point in time, an officer was coming to Frame Park because of the report that I had given. So you observed Miss Patterson walking and not inside of a vehicle? At that point in time, no. No, as in? As in she was not in a vehicle at that point in time when we came, when we finally came upon her. So when, so when, if at any time did you observe Miss Patterson inside of a vehicle? When she was going back into his vehicle to get her things or whatever it was that she was trying to pull out of his car, her phone or something or whatever. Can we play the video from 418? If Go I'm, ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Can we clear the uh, X? Continuing to sorry play from that. 418. It's at 421, but go ahead. Mm. Pause right here. Is it fair to say from it stopped at four minutes and thirty eight seconds? Is it fair to say from the video that <coughs> two people right there are crossing the road? Yes. And do you know the identity of those two people? That's me and Miss Corey. Would it be fair to say that at that time you observed Miss Patterson? That was when I first noticed the red Jeep, or red SUV, whatever you want to call it, across the street. We had zigzagged up White Rock, going between the side, going from one side to another looking for Erica. When we ended up on this side, the red SUV was parked in front of the apartment buildings. There was a tree here, and Miss Erica came from the passenger side of the vehicle around the back. That's when I heard her yell something. That's when I went over. You made reference to Miss Patterson coming from around the vehicle? Coming from the passenger side. So I had assumed that she had just gotten out of the vehicle. Do you know that for sure? If I didn't see her earlier when I was on White Rock or a vehicle earlier on White Rock, how could I know? Did you see her in, in the vehicle at that time? I've seen her come from around the vehicle. I am not actually sure if she was in the vehicle at that point in time. Thank you. I was just going by what she said over the phone. Okay. So my assumption is that she was in a vehicle. All right. Next question. If it pleases, the, if it pleases Your Honor, do we have a, a, a better view of this, of this point in particular? I don't know. Maybe on um, Exhibit 3, might be a, a better view of this If you have a specific part. spot to direct the state to, then <clears throat> I will have them do that, but... Can we, can we view uh, Exhibit 3? Do you have a specific spot to direct the state to on Exhibit 3? I'm, I'm not sure. It, it's been... 
I don't know how long since we viewed that exhibit. I don't know how long it is. I'm just reviewing my notes if there's a specific spot that you recall I might be able to direct the state to that but okay. you'll have to give me a little more information okay <coughs> I think that's why I was uh, stating about the the length of the video I'm pretty sure I, would, I'm pretty sure I would know the exact spot I don't know how long that video is it's towards the end of it I know that for sure Can you ask your next question? I'm, you need to be able to tell the state with more specificity which part of which exhibit and at what point. Well, I know the, the exhibit, I just, the exhibit would be three and the spot judging on the length of the exhibit would be towards the end of the exhibit. And you're sure it's exhibit three? Um, that would be four. that would be uh, White Rock Door One, correct? That's my understanding. All right, so we're done with this exhibit. <coughs> yes. All right, turn that off. Just I'm going to just ask the state to just pre I'll preview to the parties. We'll see if we can find it quickly <coughs> on Exhibit Three. Yes, just, so it's... Oh. Looks like it's four. Yeah, about 4.14, a little, a little over four minutes. Um, so I'm, <coughs> I would say around about the 3.30ish mark, if, if that helps. Well, we're going to just show it to you in the state, and if it helps you, then you can ask this witness a question about it. Otherwise, we're going to move on. I would say take it back to about 3.15. This is the footage, though, you're looking yes, for? Yes, this, this is the footage, yes. Is that where you want to start? Actually, let's go three minutes exactly. This is definitely the, the video. All right, this has previously been received. Why don't we watch it from this point forward and then ask your questions? But That's before it's played, um, oh, don't hit that yet. Sorry. Turn wait off. for the jury. Go ahead, tell me what you want to do. That was a mistake on our part. It's just uh, you in front sure? of you and the witness at the moment. Yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's fine right now. Um, well, I don't want to have to play it twice for the jury. So if you're oh. going to question him, let's show it. It's already been admitted. So should, should it just publish now? Why don't or we just... publish it from this point, play it, and you can ask the witness questions regarding it, okay? Okay. All right, so it's at three minutes. It's... Play about a minute and 14 seconds to get from this point to the end. So are we publishing or? Yes, we'll publish oh. now. Jury, you can let me know when it's on the monitors in the jury box. That may take a little longer. Do you, uh, right now it's paused at three minutes. Uh, this does looking at this video right now uh, bring any re recollection of that day back to you? Yeah. And using the touch screen, can you identify if you see yourself in this video? Can you identify where you are? I'm right here. And. 
can you identify who the other person is that's shown on the exhibit? That's Miss Corey. Uh, you can play from right Let's there. Let's clear that first and then. Play. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, before before we play, could you see uh, from right there where you are? Can you see Miss Patterson, where her position is at that point? No. Can we play it from right there? Go ahead. Can we pause? Um, it's fair to say that we can see you and Miss Corey running towards the area of the vehicle that just stopped. Is yes. that fair to say? Yes. And where was Miss Patterson at this time, if you recall? At that point in time, she had met up with Corey. Corey had gotten had walked ahead of me, and her and I. We're looking for her. I didn't see her right away. Corey did. And she said, she just told me she's in a red car. So that's what we were looking for. At that time, was Miss Patterson inside of the vehicle? I do not recall. Well, what I do recall is the owner of the vehicle getting out of the vehicle, and that became my primary well, concern. So fast a little bit. <coughs> we observed the two, you, you and Miss Corey running towards the area of the vehicle. Why so why such the urgency? Miss <coughs> Patterson is a mutual friend of ours. She said she was in trouble. I don't play around when people are in trouble. Can we play it from it's paused at three minutes and eight seconds. Can we play a little bit of it from there? Go ahead. Pause right there. Can you see Miss Patterson? Uh, it's paused at three minutes and eleven seconds. Do you see Miss Patterson in it, in this video? Yes. Let's pause that right now. Yes. Is she inside the vehicle? No, she is not. Had you seen her before that? Corey had spotted her, not me before that. She did. But it is fair to say that you're that you're also in the area at I that time, correct? Not in this general frame, no. I'm not, actually outside not of the, the frame. Not the not the video, but you are present on the scene. But that oh, was yes. fair to say? Yes. And what happened at this point, if I, you recall? At this point there was a physical altercation between Mr. Brooks and Miss Corey and Miss Erica. I was more worried about Miss Patterson being hurt, so I went for her to get her out of the way. I stepped between them as best I could, and I told Mr. Brooks he needs to leave. He needs to get out of here. Does not belong out here. Do you recall uh, uh, if there was a knife involved at that time? No. That is a miscommunication, and I will clarify that. The Monday. Hold on, there's not a question yet. He'll, okay. ask, he'll ask the questions. I appreciate that, but let just answer the questions that are asked at this point. Go ahead. <coughs> Did you at any point during this uh Did you at any point during this altercation? Did you observe Miss Patterson get back into the vehicle at that point? I observed her reaching into the vehicle for something. I don't know if she was grabbing a purse or something or whatnot. But she, I, she was grabbing something of her personal property out of the vehicle. Did you observe while her, this was going on? Did you observe her get into the vehicle? No. Can we play it from three minutes and eleven seconds, please? Go ahead. <coughs> Pause it right there. Did you see yourself come into the frame in this vehicle? At yes. 
would that be you there? Yes. It would be fair to say that you had a uh, some type of jacket on, a, a black jacket. At one that, point, that yes. Evening. What happened and to your that jacket? Point? That jacket hit the ground as soon as Mr. Brooks started going for the two women. So you you threw the jacket off. Mm-hmm. Is that a yes? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And. What was your reason for throwing your jacket off? Well, if the court don't hate me for it, um, I'm just going to say it's a good thing that there were two women in my way at that point in time. And what do you mean by that? That means when my jacket comes off, trouble's going to happen. Especially if you're trying to assault a woman in front of me. So that that gesture was an aggressive gesture. Oh, well, that was a completely <clears throat> focused gesture. Well, you did make reference to. Let me back up. Would it be fair to say that you just made reference to trouble following you throwing off your jacket? No, not trouble following me. Well, maybe that's the wrong way to put it. But I'm there confused by your question. Excuse me? Can you rephrase your question? Oh, I, I, I will. I'm sorry about that. You made reference to there being trouble when your jacket comes off. Is that fair to say? Yes. Would it be fair to say that that would be, or that could be, perceived as an uh, aggressive gesture? You mean as an Sustained us to the form of the question. If you recall, who gave the report that there was a knife involved? That was not put into a report. That was a mis miscommunication be between me and an officer. <coughs> I had been knifed earlier that week and had 12 stitches in one hand. I said, now I have a friend being assaulted and I need backup here. So when the police stopped and asked if there was a knife, I said, no, there was never any knife. I didn't have a knife. Ms. Patterson, Ms. Corey didn't have a knife. You didn't have a knife. Did you get a chance to see the report that was taken by law enforcement from you, from you? Well, I'm the one. You mean, you're talking about when I was on White Rock going to Miss Patterson? No, no, no. Um, the, the day of November 2020, the, no, the day of November 20, November 22nd. 2021, you made reference already to being interviewed by a detective, correct? Yes. And had you, after that, seen that report from that day? No. And you stated that the reporting of the knife was a, a, mis, a miscommunication, you yes. referred to it as? Yes. Did you at any time tell law enforcement that there was a knife involved in the altercation? No. Do you know if your friend Corey told law enforcement that there was a knife involved in the altercation? No, she did not. Do you know if your friend Ms. Patterson told any law enforcement that there was a knife involved in the altercation? She did not as well, no. And how long before uh, the incident on November 21 of 2021 had you known Ms. Patterson up until that point? Probably maybe a week and a half, two weeks. I want to back up to the phone call that you received from Ms. Patterson. 
Okay. When she called you, did she give you a name of whoever may have been assault assaulting her? She didn't have to. She was meeting one person that day and I knew exactly who he was because she had showed me his picture and rap sheet prior. Her child's father, the, the father of their 15 year old daughter is who she was meeting up with that day. And I told her multiple times, it's not a good idea. I have a bad feeling about this. Do you recall stating, well, actually, you testified to that here today. Do you recall stating that you walked past the red SUV that was parked? Yes. Would it be fair to say from the two exhibit videos that we watched today that you, in fact, did not walk past any SUV? I most definitely walked past an SUV that was red on White Rock Avenue. Whether or not it was your specific SUV, it was still a red SUV. Up until this point, knowing Ms. Patterson, I didn't know anything about the father of her child. I didn't know anything about his background except for what she showed me over the phone. Anything about his vehicle description, why would she need to tell me that? Is it fair to say that the video doesn't show you walking past any red SUV? If the video, is that fair to say? If the video proves that, then yes. Do you yourself recall stating that the alleged defendant tried to punch and push you? The, the alleged defendant being you, yes, attempted to. Would it be fair to say from the video that it doesn't show you being pushed or? No, it does not. It shows me pulling two women away from the situation. Any reason why you would state to detectives that the alleged, the alleged defendant attempted to punch and push you? Probably because there were three different people's fists flying and I was just trying to get the, uh, the people that I cared about out of the way of danger. So if my statement to the detective is off a little bit after watching a bunch of people get run over, I can understand why. So you were at the parade that day? I was not at the parade that day. I was in the area. So how... Trying to get back to my house. So how can you watch people being run over if you weren't at the parade that day? I wasn't attending the parade. I was in the area that the parade route was in. My street is the parade route. Did you see anyone injured that day? When during the parade. When the yes, after I walked back through that area, you saw someone get injured. I saw a red SUV take off like a bad out down Main Street Did and go see? through a crowd of people. The question was, did you see, did you see this take place? With my own freaking eyes, yes. How many times do I have to say yes for you to understand it? Y-E-S spells yes. I'm sorry, Your Honor, I don't, I don't know how to... Um, are you moving to strike the last response? Yeah. Um, the jury will disregard the last response. I'm just going to remind both of you. Please answer the questions that are asked. If follow-up needs to take place, either Mr. Brooks or the state will ask. Is it, is it fair to, well, in reference to the uh, Exhibit 3 video that, that we just viewed? You're talking about the one by the elementary school? <coughs> yeah, the one, okay. that, the one that we just viewed, just uh, which would be uh, Exhibit 3. Is it fair to say from that vehicle? Got me. Video. I'm, I'm sorry. From that video. Is it fair to say from that video that in fact there are not three people throwing punches? Would that be fair to say? There are 
are three people throwing hands in that video, Erica, Corey, and Mr. Brooks. Not myself. If you watch the video, you will see three pairs of hands go up towards one another. Whether one is stepping in to pull someone away from another or not, hands are being brought up. Where you went after that altercation? You mean where me and the two girls went? Where me and Miss Pat yes, and Miss Corey went? Where you and the we the started. Two friends went. Yes. We started walking back. We turned to walk back the direction we had came, so taking White Rock to Main Street, and then uh, cutting through the neighborhood there to get over to where the women's shelter was. That was where we <laughs> were going at that point in time. However, <coughs> things took a drastic turn when the red SUV that I have described multiple times went down the opposite direc direction of White Rock Avenue across the railroad tr tracks and the intersection of Perkins and White Rock and then turned back around and came back down. That is what you saw in the video here when the red vehicle pulled up on the school side of White Rock. After the altercation between Ms. Patterson, Mr. Brooks, Ms. Corey, and myself, the three of us Miss Patterson, Miss Corey, we started to leave. I told Mr. Brooks, you need to get out of here. The police have been called. You need to leave. You need to leave now. You do not belong here. You, I did not you, expect <coughs> to strike everything that's not per pertaining to the question that was asked. Actually, I'm just describing the entire event in its entirety. Uh, I, I understand. Um, I'll strike the response as being non-responsive to the question. The jury is to disregard it. Um, Re-ask re your question again. Okay. Do you recall where you and your two female friends went after the <coughs> altercation? We started to head back in the direction of the women's shelter where they lived, where they were staying at the time. Do you recall at any point during your uh, travels to the women's shelter, as you referred to it, do you recall at any time coming into contact with another law enforcement officer? Within that point in time, no. Except for the one that pulled out of Frame Park. Do you recall at any time <coughs> being stopped by a law enforcement officer on your way back to the women's shelter? We were stopped part way down White Rock and that was when I had told the officer because he wouldn't get out of his SUV. I had let him know that they need to be on the lookout for a red SUV that took off down, back down White Rock towards Perkins Avenue or Street or Road, whatever it is. The officer had asked me if there was someone with a knife, and that was when I held up my left hand, and I said, no, I said, I said, I have 12 stitches from a knife injury on this hand, but this is what you need to be looking for, is this red SUV. And I'm guessing that's where the miscommunication of the knife came in, and I don't know where that officer went after that. And... Would it be fair to say that that was the second law enforcement officer that you had spoke with the, that day, at that time? Yes. You are referring to November 21st? Correct. Okay. During that, <coughs> during that interaction with the second law enforcement officer, do you yourself recall stating that a black guy just assaulted my friend? No. Any reason why the officer would report that? Objection calls for speculation. Rounds. Sustained. Calls for speculation. <clears throat> Do 
did you yourself sustain any injuries during the altercation? Mm, I ripped open three stitches on my hand, but that was more so from pulling Miss Corey away from Mr. Brooks so we could get out of there. Did you report to any law enforcement? Well, I guess that would refer to the second law enforcement officer that you spoke with. Did you report that to that officer? No. So at the time, I didn't notice it. I didn't notice my hand was ripped open again until I got home. So it would be fair to say that you don't know how those stitches opened up. Would that be fair to say? No, I'm pretty sure I know how they opened. My stitches got caught on the zipper on Corey's backpack. That's how the stitches were ripped out of my hand when I was trying to pull her away from Mr. Brooks and intervene between her, Mr. Brooks, and Ms. Patterson. Knowing a little bit about stitches, would it be fair to say that a wound that was stitched being reopened would cause a little bit of pain? Would that be fair to say? Objection. Relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Relevance. Did you notice any blood from the... Uh, Stitches being reopened? Didn't feel anything until I actually looked at it when I got home. Twelve stitches coming across my thumb in kind of like a fish hook type pattern. It was the two over here that ripped open and the one up here. Or actually, I take that back, the one up here. So just for the record, he's holding his left hand. He had his uh, thumb out, extended almost like an L, but with the other fingers almost like a C, and he was pointing to his left thumb uh, near, I would say, the middle of the thumb and then the, uh, the curve of the thumb where on the inside where it goes up toward the other, toward the index finger. Sorry, I have to make a now, record of all No, that's just fine. <laughs> Go ahead. So was it two stitches that opened or three? Objection. Grounds. Um, overruled. He may answer, but then move on. <coughs> it was three. And do you recall what time you made it home that evening? Absolutely not. Was it immediately after the altercation or sometime after? Or No, I took the girls back to the shelter and then I started running back towards Main Street to try and see if I could avoid the parade traffic. And... Uh, that's when I saw the red SUV go down Main Street. Recall speaking with uh, your your women friends after you had made it home that evening. Yes. Did at any time you indicate to them that? You Hold on, let me him finish the question. He was asking what he strike, indicated strike to the them. Yeah, I, I, I thought that's what I said. You can ask your question. That's what I thought you were saying too. Did you yourself at any time indicate to your female friends that you had sustained injury during the altercation? No. Objection relevance. Is it, overall, his answer may stand. And uh, 
in the time that you had known Miss Patterson up until that day of November 21st of 2021, had you yourself ever heard Miss Patterson refer to the alleged defendant by a different name? Objection relevance. Grounds. Um, Overruled the witness may answer if you know. No. You mean like an alias or something? A different name. Well, okay, that, that could, a nickname, an alias, I mean, let's be specific here. Did, did Ms. Patterson ever refer to him with another name, if you recall? Not that I can personally recall, no, ma'am. All right, thank you. Do you recall if, to your knowledge, was uh, your friend Miss Corey, as you refer to her, <coughs> do you recall her uh, stating that she was injured during the altercation? She did tell me that she, she <coughs> I believe she like hurt her finger or her fingernail or something like that, but I don't think it was relevant to the incident that had happened. What do you mean by you don't think it was relevant to the incident that happened? Justice relevance. Sustained us to the form of the question. No further questions. Before I decide whether to do the cross time, how long do you believe it will be? Zero minutes because I have no cross. All right, thank you. And you can step down. And we're going to take a break. Um, give me a second. I'm going to, I'll rise for the jury. Let me excuse the jury for a second. All right, thank you. You may be seated. You may uh, step down, <coughs> sir. And I presume he may be released from his subpoena, Mr. Brooks. You're done questioning yeah. him? Yeah, I'll, I'll be just no longer. All right, you are released from your subpoena, sir. Thank you. All right, let's take about a 15 minute break. Anything we need to address prior to that, or can we no. do it when we come back? No, thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Brooks, work with the state, please, for the next witness. We have them available. <coughs> Are back on the record. It's 3.58. Appearances are as they were before. Jury is coming into the courtroom. Subject matter jurisdiction. Your request, as I understand it, is noted. The objection is noted. It's overruled. We'll continue with the questioning of a witness. You may call your next <coughs> witness as soon as all the jurors get in the jury box. All right. Thank you. Please be seated. Go ahead, sir. You may call your next witness. Uh, defense calls Heather R. Reamer. Thank you. Good afternoon, ma'am. If you would please make your way to the witness stand. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand. It is up a riser. Be mindful of that. And then my clerk, Teresa. <coughs> Heather Reamer, H-E-A-T-H-E-R-R-I-E-M-E-R. -E 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 Thank you. Go ahead, sir, your witness. <coughs> Good afternoon, Ms. Reamer. How are you feeling today? I'm okay. Um, 
I want to direct your uh, attention to the evening of November 21st of 2021. Uh, do you recall what you were doing that evening? I was at the Waukesha Christmas Parade. And do you recall who you were with at the parade? I was with my husband and three friends and one of their children. Um, about what time, if you recall, the you and your family arrived? Um, right before it started, we were running late, and then we, by the time we got to where we were seated, it was um, right before it started. I I don't recall exact time. Do you recall? Do you recall where uh, you and your family were positioned uh, along the parade route that evening? Um, at the time, I don't remember, but um, I later found out that it was the historical society. Um, what do you recall weather-wise that evening? Was it a pretty chilly evening? If yes. You, if you recall. Yes. Uh, pretty windy. Yes. So I'm assuming at some point um, you observed a, a bit of commotion. Would that be fair to say? Yes. And do you recall what that commotion was? Um, everyone running around was the biggest commotion. Uh, at, at, at that point, um, did the area you were positioned in get pretty loud, chaotic? As, yeah, screaming gets loud. Before, do you remember what you and your family were doing uh, directly prior to the uh, parade that evening? I don't recall. At the point you uh, uh, observed this uh, commotion, what did you do from that point? Started running. Um, I'm assuming with you, you and your family all took the same course, course of action? We all ran, yes. And where did you run to? Away from the parade route. I don't, I'm not familiar with streets. I'm thinking it's East Avenue. We ran down that road. Uh, would that be a side street connected to the main parade route? Or? Yes, it was a perpendicular route. Uh, do you recall if that side street was barricaded in any way? I don't recall. Do you recall if there were any law enforcement officers stationed at that side street? I don't recall. <coughs> Did you, uh, at any time during the, the commotion when you and you know, your family were at the parade, do you recall seeing anything that uh, drew your attention in any way? Yes. And do you recall what that was that you saw? A red Ford SUV driving through faster than all the other cars in the parade. And what did you observe this vehicle doing at the time that it caught your attention? It was honking. Uh, well, I heard honking. I'm not positive if it was the red SUV or another car. Uh, did we, you notice any other vehicles around the vehicle you saw, following the vehicle you saw? Following, no. It, it passed a float that had a vehicle <coughs> in the parade, so it was by another vehicle, yes. And it was, by, it was passing the, the, the vehicle you're referring yes. to, correct? And you stated uh, a reference to honking. Um, 
in your opinion, strictly your opinion, why would a vehicle honk its horn? <laughs> To alert somebody? Do you recall uh, when the, I'm assuming at some point the vehicle passed the position where you were, would that be fair to say? Yes. At any time during the vehicles passing you, did you see who was driving the vehicle? No. Uh, did you notice if they were uh, intense to the vehicle as far as windows? Ma'am, can you speak up a bit? Oh, I don't recall. Thank you. Do you recall if you were able to see into the vehicle? I don't recall. Do you recall if you got a chance to catch the license plate number of the vehicle? I, no, I didn't. And from your recollection, when the vehicle passed you, were the windows up or down? I don't recall. Did you at some time uh, report what you saw to law enforcement that evening? That evening, I did not, no. Did you at any time report what you had saw that evening to law enforcement? Yes. And do you recall what agency that law enforcement officer was from? I, I don't recall. I'm going to assume Waukesha, but I don't, I don't recall. And during the course of reporting with what you saw, was it more of a, a recorded interview or were they writing down what you were telling them? I was on the phone, so I don't know what they were doing. Okay. Do you recall uh, if that was in the days following the incident or a little longer after that? It was after the incident. I don't know how long after. Upon arriving at the parade that evening with your family, um, did you notice any of the side streets barricaded in any way? Any of them? Yes. Do you recall if there were law enforcement officers at those barricades, barricaded side streets? I don't recall. Do you recall about how long the parade had been ongoing before you saw this vehicle? I don't recall. <coughs> and from, from that point, did you and your family immediately leave the parade and head home or? We left, we didn't head home. Did you or, did you or any of your family members uh, suffer any injuries during this incident? No. At any time after the incident, do you recall seeing any uh, uh, news reports related to this incident? Yes.
did you keep up with those reports or was it just that evening or the days? Just a couple days within whatever was right immediately. I, I'm not a person to watch the news. <coughs> And after that uh, initial phone conversation with law enforcement, did uh, any more law enforcement officers follow up with you about the report? No. Did you yourself follow up with law enforcement after that no. initial report? Did you yourself observe the vehicle that passed you during the parade? Did you yourself witness anyone injured by the vehicle? I don't believe so. Uh, that's all I have right now. Thank you. Any uh, cross? Yes, briefly. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, good afternoon, Ms. Reamer. Thank you for being here today. Yes. Um, I'd like you to take a look at the man seated to my right, table to your left, uh, Mr. Brooks. You ever seen that man before? Said to be in court that name. Noted, overruled. Yes. Tell us about when you've seen Mr. Brooks before. Objection leading. Um, it's cross exam, so it's proper. They may lead. You may ask. You may answer. As we were driving to the parade. Um, we were coming to a stoplight and we saw the red SUV coming down the wrong way on the road and um, I, I slowed down because the car in front of me started to back up to let him through. This took place outside of a gas station, is that correct? Yes. Uh, Your Honor, I'd ask that we display for everybody exhibit number seven. It's previously been received and published. Go ahead. Objection to uh, relevancy. Exhibit 7 has previously been received. Overruled. Is it relevant to this particular witness? Yes, it is. Yes, go ahead and publish, Madam Clerk. Ms. Reamer, can you see the, uh, the map depicted on the screen in front of you? Yes. <laughs> We're looking at the intersection of North Street and Barstow Street. Does that look correct to you? Yes. And is this the gas station that we're talking about? Correct. And you were parked on North Street facing southwestbound at the time. Is that right? Objection, speculation. Overruled the witness may answer. Is that the way of traffic? I don't know. I well, let's assume, south. based on these arrows here, yep. that objection, speculation. Yep. <coughs> um, they're on the map, overruled. Her answer was yes, and you may ask the next question. Madam Clerk, can we please clear the annotations? And you saw the red SUV that we've been talking about come the wrong way on North Street. Is that right? Correct. And what happened after that? Um, should I draw? Sure, yep, okay. that's a touch screen. Go for it. Um, so I stopped roughly back here um, as the car that was here started to reverse this way. Okay, can we please, let's get a screen grab of this, please, uh, Your Honor, and mark it as Exhibit 7. It'll be C as in cat. Or Charlie. C, Charlie, please. It will be so marked. And just for the record, the green line was placed by Attorney Wichow uh, from, as you're looking at the exhibit, left to right to demonstrate travel of a vehicle in his question. And then the witness put the yellow mark on the screen and it will be received as 7C, as in Charlie. Go ahead. Objection to relevancy. Um, overruled. You saw Daryl Brooks driving that red SUV in front of that gas station, is that correct? Objection. At I that time I didn't know. Caught that name and it's speculative. Um, overruled, you may answer. Um, at that time I didn't know his name, but yes. But now that you see him sitting in court today? Yes. That's the guy? Yes. Objection. Speculative. Overruled. The record will reflect the identification as 
of the defendant as the driver of the red SUV she saw as depicted in this exhibit. Thank you. May we please display for everybody exhibit number 15, which has also previously been received and published. Go ahead. Can we zoom in please on the intersection of uh, Main Street and East Northeast Avenue? Objection relevancy. I presume the question will provide the relevance, so go ahead. Thank you. You were sitting in front of the Historical Society, you, you testified? Yes. And do you recognize this map in front of you? Objection speculative. Overruled the witness may answer. I, no, I don't. Okay. Would the Historical Society be uh, near this intersection that I'm circling, East and Main? Yes. Okay. We can please remove <coughs> that annotation, Madam Clerk. When you saw the red SUV drive by, you testified you could not see the driver, correct? Correct. Because it was going so fast? Yes. Did you ever see that SUV come to a stop at any point on Main Street? No. In fact, did you see it accelerate as it traveled towards more people? Objection yes. speculative. Um, it says, uh, overruled, the witness may answer. It's yes. not like you was going to say sustain. And then I remembered you had called the witness, not the state. So cross-examination is appropriate. Fair enough, though. Next question. Did we get an answer on that? I said yes. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Redirect, sir. Yes. Do you want any of the exhibits up? Uh, I, I forgot what the one was before this. Seven. Seven. Seven was the map with near the gas station. This is 15. I'm going to turn it off until you tell me you need something. Uh, I need uh, Exhibit 7. All right. The state would put that up and we'll publish it for the jury as well. And when, when shown this... Uh, Exhibit on cross, you you stated you were approximately around. As a matter of fact, that that wouldn't be fair. Can you erase that um, that that mark, please? It's were clear. You, were you were you show again where your uh, vehicle was positioned? It's just around. Okay. Probably right about here. And where we. When I, that's when I initially slowed down. To start. Okay. Um, and you stated there was another car that uh, did a, a, a backing up motion. Can you show again where that vehicle was positioned? If, if they were at the light going this way, backing up. If you recall, or do you recall if there were any vehicles in this space right here? There was none. Rough estimate. About how far would you estimate the distance is between your vehicle and the vehicle that was at the light? Rough estimate. I never came to a complete stop back there. It's when I started to slow down. So you were still kind of rolling forward a little bit? Yes, because they backed up, moved forward, and so then I moved forward. So you didn't come to a stop until you noticed that vehicle backing up? No, I didn't come to a complete stop until we were back up at the light. I started to slow down at that point. So where did you end up? Can, uh, I'm sorry, can you erase the, the white circle? I can erase all of it or none of it? Uh, the, the white circle. Only, I think it's just all or nothing. Oh, all. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. So we'll start this again. Um, where did you finally come to a complete stop at, if you recall? And at that time, well, back up a little bit from, before I get to that. You observed an SUV, you say, at some point during, at some point before you came to a complete stop? Yes. And what did you see that vehicle do? 
Uh, what did you see it do after you noticed that it was coming uh, in that direction? Turning here. Would that be into the gas station? Yes. And what did you see the vehicle do at that point? Um, roll down their window and yell something at the car in front of me. Did it stop? Yes. Was it, I'm, a, I'm assuming you might know what I mean by this, was it like a brake stop or was it a park stop, if, if you recall? If you're not in the vehicle, how do you know that it's a, they put it in park? Well, brake stop would be brake lights, but okay. Objection, move to strike. Um, I'll grant that, strike the last statement made by the defendant, but you may ask your next question. And how long were you at the light? It's a very short time. It turned green pretty quickly. <coughs> and in that short time, you were able to see who was driving the vehicle, the SUV, as you say, that went into the gas station? Yes. Is that the same SUV you saw at the parade that evening? Yes. The same vehicle that you said you don't recall if it was tenant or not? Yes. So at the point of seeing this vehicle at the gas station, at that point, did you notice any tents? I don't recall. Did you notice if there was anyone else in the vehicle at that time? I only saw one person. <coughs> Could you see into the back of the vehicle? I don't recall. Can you see the passenger seat of the vehicle? Yes. Was anybody in the passenger seat? No. But you don't know for sure about the back seat? No, I couldn't see it. Can we uh, take down this uh, Exhibit 7? Go ahead. Pull up exhibit 15. Can we put, pull that back up? The state would please pull that up. And we'll publish that for everyone. And Hold on, let's make sure the jury has it. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. No problem. Go ahead. And you stated that. You were in, in front of the Historical Society? Correct. And if I recall, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that would be somewhere around this area here? Yes. <laughs> yes. So can we, uh, yes. Yes. Can you. we erase that <laughs> white? So the side streets, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to tap the screen. Can you erase that? I'm sorry. The side streets would be uh, Buckley Street and North Northeast Avenue. Would that be fair to say by looking at the, the map? Yes, that's what the map shows. And you said you don't recall if those side streets were barricaded. I wasn't at the intersection. The you historical were, society is at that intersection, but I was in front of the historical society. So would it be fair to say you were close to the side street? I was close, but not at it. So I don't know if there was barricades there. I wasn't close enough to see there, to be by barricades. So you stated to you ran away from the commotion. So 
it would be fair to say at some point you moved from your position in front of the historical society, correct? Correct. And do you recall what side street you went down to when, when you were running? We ran up to the building of the historical society on the side of East Avenue. We can, uh, what, just really quick. So that would be this side street here. Yes. Uh, we could take down uh, exhibit, is it 15? And <coughs> you stated that you knew that the identification of the, uh, the driver of this SUV based on what you observed at the gas station, correct? Can you repeat that? You stated that you, let me back up. You were able to identify the driver of this SUV based on what you observed at the gas station, correct? The gas station, I saw the driver, yes. Do you recall what the driver was wearing when you observed him at the gas station? At the gas station, no. Do you yourself recall in your telephone conversation with law enforcement stating that the driver was wearing a red-orange shirt? That was not from the gas station. So where, where would that description come from, if not the gas station? Um, I saw video footage of you in somebody's backyard. So what did you observe the driver of the vehicle wearing at the gas station? I don't recall. So it'd be fair to say that in your phone conversation with law enforcement, you gave a description based on what you had seen from footage, I guess that, that would be the right word to use. The shirt color, but your description was from the, the face was from the, the gas station. And do you recall in that phone interview stating that you weren't positive on the shirt color? Yes. Do you recall in that phone interview stating that since seeing the news that you may be getting the clothing description incorrect? I remember saying that I've seen the news. I don't remember saying that I that is why I'm getting it. It wasn't the same as when you were driving. So would it be fair to say that your description came from watching footage at some point and from news reports at some point? Not news reports. <clears throat> but you did see re this re incident reported on the news? Yes. Did you see where the vehicle? Did you see where the vehicle <coughs> went when it passed? When it passed your position. Objection. Can we just clarify whether that's at the gas station or the parade? Uh, Sustained. Sorry for that. I'll clarify. Thank you. Do you recall seeing where the vehicle went when it passed your position at the parade that evening? Continued down the parade route. And you already stated that during the parade, seeing the vehicle and not seeing the driver, how are you sure that they, how are you sure that that driver of the vehicle you saw at the gas station was the same vehicle at the parade? 
I know that they were both red SUVs, Ford SUVs. <laughs> were you yourself <laughs> sure that they were the same vehicle? They were the same model, same color, same make. So what is the make and model, if you recall, of the vehicle that you saw at the gas station? Ford Escape. And how did you come to that determination based on your observation at the gas station? Because I know a decent amount of cars. <coughs> by uh, decent? I mean, I, I don't know all makes, but I know this one for sure because I had a friend that had the same exact make and model, just different color. So are you yourself able to just look at a vehicle and tell the make and model? Some, yes. So it would be fair to say some, not all. Correct. So that brings me back to the driver. You, you stated you didn't see the driver of the vehicle you saw at the parade. How did you know there was the same driver? Objection. The state is the evidence. She never testified that she was the same driver. S I'm, sustained. I'm asking, a, I'm asking how did you Rephrase your question, please. <clears throat> Do you know if it was the same driver? No. Further questions? All right, thank you. You may step down <coughs> and you are excused from your subpoena. It is 4.34, so we will end for the day. And I will read my instructions to the jury once again. Do not begin your deliberations and discussion of the case until all the evidence is presented. Thank you. Uh, be seated. I know. Um, Mr. Brooks, I think you wanted to make a more full record disregarding um, the timing of that last witness. I'm not going to put all of the details on the record. We made a record uh, in closed session just due to a privacy issue related to that witness. Um, and I uh, required you essentially to call that witness out of the preferred order that you had given her availability. Um, I believe you wanted to put on the record the in information you initially had from Attorney Opper was general about her unavailability on Friday, which was the day, as I understand, that you preferred to call her, and more information was provided today. I don't want to get into the specifics, but would that be a fair characterization of uh, kind of the discussion we had outside the presence of the public? Yes, yeah, fair. Anything you want to add to that? No, nah, just... Um pretty much sums it up. I, okay, good. I, so I felt that it would be thinking about it as everything was happening so fast. I, I was just like, yeah, it probably would be best to, um, you know, take take the procedure that she's having into account because it, it could be. I don't want to go into that while we're still on, in the public record. Right. All right, due to her uh, privacy rights. Um, but... Um, I appreciate your understanding with that and calling her. I did require you to call her out of order, but I appreciate your understanding and um, of that. Um, I don't think there's anything else I need to cover at this time, uh, unless there's something from either one of the parties from the state first. Uh, no, but we would like some further direction from the defendant as to who he wants here tomorrow morning and tomorrow afternoon if he wants us just to continue that list that he originally provided or if there's an update and we can do that off the record your honor i don't know that we need you involved but <coughs> okay 
Thank you. Then hopefully the parties can figure that out without me needing to be involved further. But anything from you, sir? Uh, no, I'm just going to say with that, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to put them in specific order. Not looking for the order, but we're behind given the timetable and the understanding, between, as, as I understand it, between you and the state. Uh, so, um, the state has the list. So. so, generally speaking, you've been taking about a half an hour, I would say, for each witness. Um, at least that one took about 35 minutes. If we go on that schedule, do you think, understanding we take a mid morning break, a lunch break, and um, a mid-afternoon break, I would think we could get through at least three to four tomorrow morning and three to four in the afternoon. I'm going to have the parties be available for that and be ready for that, whatever order, but... All the parties? Yes, both you and the state. So, so at this point, there's no telling what witnesses will be here tomorrow, right? Well, per, based on the the groupings that you gave to the state, it sounds like we got through only one from each right kind one. of category. That so we'll go back to the first would have been Thursday morning. You need to call the rest of Thursday morning. Was there two left right. of that? Yes, correct. So we, and so let's do Thursday morning and Thursday afternoon. The people you designated, I'm going to direct the state to have here tomorrow morning. That's four witnesses, whatever order of those four. Five. It's five, but yes, it's five. We'll, we'll have them here um, based on your original list. And then how many does that leave? Because I'm that's, not that's what I'm trying to doing good about. with math this four. late in the day. Four, so four in the afternoon then. So my, our hope is to get through all your witnesses. I can not say this tomorrow. for the record. One that I intend, one witness I intend to call tomorrow is not going to be 35 minutes. Fair enough. Do you plan, plan to call that person in the morning or the afternoon? I'm, I'm leaning towards the afternoon. That could change depending on the flow of the morning, I would guess. If the morning goes pretty Can you tell me which list they were on when you gave it to the state? Was it Thursday afternoon, Friday morning, or Friday afternoon? I didn't put them on days, but I believe they were in the maybe second, maybe the second flow of names. If you just want to tell helps. me who it is so we can prepare so that person is told to come in the afternoon? rather than wait through the morning? I don't want to say who it is. Well, I want the person to be here when we're ready to go, but... They were here today, if that helps. Yeah, I know who it is. It's Erica Patterson, Your Honor. There's maybe, no mystery here. Maybe right. it is, that's maybe what it I isn't. Would have, that's kind of who I thought it would be as well. I, so... Uh, I'm going to have her come tomorrow afternoon. Then. Okay, we will have her here at 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. So Thank we need you. to be mindful of people's <clears throat> schedules. Thank you. Thanks. We'll have so, everyone else here. At that's 8 interesting 30. because what if that was not who I was referring to? Then you need to tell me right now so I can make an alteration to that. Come on, Judge. Sir, we're at the end of the third week of trial. So I need to keep this fair? moving along. Can we along. at least be fair and say that, that, that that's not due to me, though? Um, <laughs> that would not be fair to say. It, how? How? <laughs> the, it's... How? The state said that they would they needed five to seven business days to present their case. Did they or did they not say that on the record? And there's so how how it doesn't did matter I, how we got there at this point. I'm trying my darndest to, to get all the witnesses chop, chop. done. So I'm directing the state to have Miss Patterson come tomorrow afternoon. If that's the what other I was referring witnesses, to, which I wasn't, but everybody think they know what I'm thinking. Then you need to tell them if it's someone else and if you want her here in the morning. I'll say this. Everybody that was here today that didn't get called, have them here tomorrow. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five people. And you need to tell me who you want in the morning, not by the order, and who you want for the afternoon. Otherwise, I'm going to make the order that I just made. No, you, how are you gonna make the order for me? Under nine zero six eleven, sir. No, I can't. I can call. I can call. I have the right to call them in the order that they. The state didn't have to 
have an order, and I'm, I'm guessing. No, but the state helping you out in terms of the order. They were helping me out with serving. And the they're subpoenas. helping you. Not so, the order of how I would call the witnesses, but the subpoenas. And I gave the state. Do you want to be responsible for calling each person tonight and telling them what time they need to be here? Or should we let the See, state here we do go that? With this again. It's, it's something that's impossible to do. That's not true. You have How's access to true? a phone. So, so somebody's going to answer a collect call from someone they don't even know. Nobody in this courtroom will answer a collect call and pay for That's a phone call from somebody that you not my understanding of how it works at the jail that you can, that yes. there's other means to make there, phone there calls. Is no, there is no other way to utilize the phone. Well, maybe I'm wrong on that, but be that as it may, the state is helping you out. This is, this is to make tomorrow go as smoothly as possible, to be effective, to be efficient, and to use all of our time wisely. Your Honor, with all respect, I did what this I did what was asked me to do. I provided them with the list of the witnesses that I would call. I just and I stated before that I would not put them in order and the state accepted the list that I gave them. So why at this point is Who are the witnesses who are here today? A problem? Kohler, uh, Douglas Kohler, Detective Guth, Erica Patterson, Christopher Bertram, and Jason Hayes were here today in addition to Miss Reimer. Ms. Reimer's now done. Nicholas Kirby was also here today. He's done. If we are going to continue to assist Mr. Brooks in getting these witnesses here, we need to have a reasonable time schedule. These witnesses don't just show up by the tooth fairy. We have to communicate with them. They have jobs. They have families. I've explained this three times to Mr. <coughs> Brooks. Hey, hey, if hey. he wants our assistance, Objection. she can chill with all that. She can chill with all that to, tone. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. I know get on that if that's what it hey, is. Hey, I know it's been a long day. Let's let's keep this civil. That's what I'm trying to do. But so she I, she gonna have to tone it down. I think we I think both of the parties are getting a little frustrated. I'm getting frustrated. So, I Kohler, Guth, nice. Hayes, Patterson. I missed a fifth. Bertram. Guth is a police officer, right? Yes. I know who Eric Patterson is. How about Kohler, Hayes, and Bertram? Are uh, those they citizens? Were, they're citizens that relate to the parade, I believe, post. and post-parade. Not the DV. It seems to me that when that even with one of the witnesses taking more than 35 minutes, that doesn't fill up the whole day. So we need to have some other people on that list for the afternoon. So I will just continue to work in the order of the list that was provided. Your Honor, I think that's the only reasonable thing we can do at this point. Or we can do it alphabetical or we can do it by random lot because I don't know really what else to do. By the list that was given. What was the order of the list that you were given? The first three were Kirby, Kohler, and Guth. The next line has three names, Patterson, Bertram, Hayes. The third line has three names, Reimer, Aldrich, and Lescano. The last list has two names and then also reads the state of Wisconsin. First three people on the list you need to advise to be here tomorrow at 8.30. Okay. The next two people tomorrow at 10.30. The next Two people after that tomorrow at 1.30, and the next two people from there at 3.30, and then do I have any one left over from there? No. Yeah. One more? No. If I have to go late tomorrow, then I would say the last person can be at 4, 4.30 if need be. Yeah, I agree. I, we would very much like to get through the defense witnesses tomorrow, Your Honor. Uh, I don't know if that's going to happen to you. Well, that's the uh, order that I'm making in terms of the times people need to show up. That gives you a range of people to select from. I'm going to have to see that, uh, what you're referring to then, because. Well, I trust you wrote it down, because that's what I, I did. I so didn't. I we didn't are write in recess it down. then for the evening. We'll see everyone tomorrow at 8 a.m. Right. So if they don't get everyone. called like that, don't try to blame it on me.